I, David Barron from Method Tattoo. Once again, we're moving forward with our progression on knowledge, information, and understanding, sharing what we have to share and learning what we have to learn. And what you just heard there was a cool little jam session that we had after being invited to our great friend Elliot and Rochelle's house. Larissa and I went out there, had an amazing dinner. We hung out, made music, talked about philosophy, the world, the universe, plant medicines, and maybe even a couple fart jokes. <laughs> Without any further ado, I would like to introduce. Not musically inclined at all. Oh. 
one. <laughs> like this one here. It's like, My uh, mom is not very easy to clean, but my dad is. That's like I never flew around here. <laughs> So it's basically like, I've tried so it finds a spot. Right it's really hard. That's about it. You can hang on to that so you can get it for yourself. It's kind of tedious to like set aside 10 minutes a day to do whatever. You know, this thing is trippy. <laughs> oh, this one turned out like super Middle Eastern. This Starting off right away, let's uh, you know <clears throat> make sure we get this. Let's see if I can read without having reading problems. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> and because the farmland was poisoned, farmers were forced to purchase and plant unnatural seeds. And the false powers who altered the seeds of Mother Nature made it difficult for any to purchase natural seeds. And they made and sold unnatural foods that made the people ill. And they made the so and sold unnatural medicines to treat the illnesses caused by unnatural foods. And at this point, the and that, and all of this was well planned in order to increase the profit and thereby the power of the false powers. Hell yeah! 
Hell yeah. Book that's, of Enoch. That's from the Book of Enoch? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's a good one. So what do you get from that? Do you get the... What? From that? Yeah. yeah what, do you, what do you uh, perceive? The present. That? Yeah? Do you see that that's as just a present. reflection of... <laughs> what's going on in the world right what now. What has happened and yeah. what is It's happening. pretty much where we're at. Yeah. You know, like, we've been, uh, t- everything's been taken away yeah. from our, uh, our truth, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Truth of humanity. You know, and there's so many, so many things that are reawakening and re- reawakening us today. Yeah. You know, like, uh, organic farmers and plant medicines and yeah get understanding that what's better for us is to stop meddling with every process and and go back to what the earth actually has to give to us yeah Hmm. precisely what is the book the book of Enoch yeah Explain the Book of Enoch. Yeah, I don't the know Book of Enoch is like a, the old. It's like basically from the Dead Sea Scrolls, from what I've been told. Yeah. And the Dead Sea Scrolls were lost hundreds and thousands of years ago, during the time that they wrote the Bible, and all that stuff. And so that's why like certain texts that the Old Testament of the Bible. Right? Yeah, the Old Testament. Yeah. It doesn't have it. it. Like so many books don't have that those passages in it, such as uh, the one that's like uh, what's the name of it. Um, the Essene Gospel. You heard of that before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Essene Gospel is basically a text of the the Bible that has been taken out of there and changed, basically, and removed because it's like the the basis of natural living on this earth, okay. which states basically every man shall not, every man and woman should not eat upon the flesh of an animal but should treat that animal as its brother and sister. Yeah. And to on each and to each seed and fruit bearing plant we shall eat as our meat and as our uh bread. Yeah. It, hmm. so what Is that, that like a passage from the book? What yeah, that's that? from the Essene Gospel okay. basically. Yeah. And so with the <clears throat> Essene Gospel, like cuz the Old Testament that's originally from the Torah, right? Or what is I it guess called? so, I don't know. It's the original, because yeah. that's the, the Hebrew texts that they translated, and now it's a different part, and then at the Council of Nicaea, they put together the, the New Testament yeah. from a bunch of different guys' yeah. ideals. Yeah, it's all pretty weird. Have you ever read, like, the direct from translation Old Testament of the Bible directly translated from the Hebrew? Originally, like I've, word for word. I've read the Hebrew. Yeah. Yeah. So, and have you read the the English? The English one. I've only learned them like way back when I was in school. Oh okay. Yeah. Because they're vastly different. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> even like even, even the Hebrew ones, like it's like totally a lot of it's messed up. Yeah. Like and they leave out a lot of stuff like the whole birth of Christ and yeah. all that stuff and how that actually purpose. took. Yeah, on I'm purpose. Sure. Yeah. They they left that all out because like they told the story about Christ. Yeah. But they never told the story about Christ. Yeah. There's kind mm. of you know, here. Yeah. Mm. It's like that's what Here he is. Yeah, here he is. This Ta-da. is this guy that got his mother got raped and <laughs> he was born as yeah. a vir- from a virgin mother because she was considered a virgin even though she was raped. Yeah. And then she was Is that raped. why she was considered a virgin? Yeah, because the the Pharisees Basically, we're told to be, we're spoken to be the holy people, and they were allowed to have intercourse with young, and young adults and young children as a blessing to their life. <laughs> and that was the thing that those people basically be, are what we call today the Illuminati or the Zionists. Yeah, the, uh, whatnot. Wow, you know, that means. Bible's got people so clueless. <laughs> right? But no, but Jesus is a cool guy, man. Yeah, like, yeah. No, absolutely. No. no, but like I just that just. <laughs> Finally clicked. (laughs) Well, just even in the beginning, the very beginning story in Genesis, yeah, the the Hebrew text, like you can probably confirm maybe a little bit better, but it explains that in the beginning there was him and her. It wasn't Mm -hmm. like because 
when you read it in the English version, they leave out the element of the feminine and the masculine both sides, yeah. understanding that it's dualistic and it's splitting at every point and becoming dual all the way down. Yet, in the English version, they leave all that out. It's yeah, just like, like here, here it is in the Holy Megillah, it states, uh, um, it's called the lover and the beloved, Ja and Jala. Yeah. Lo, I know what I shall create. For I have looked deeply into Asaph, which is creation, searching for the most beautiful, most wise, the most blissful way to create my children. And behold, as I looked deeply into creation, I found the answer looking back at me. Ye, the answer to the question asked by Ja, how will I create my children, was revealed into the face of Jala. For when Ja looked within Asaph and asked, how will I create my children? Behold, the face of our goddess, our divine mother, Jala, appeared. Lo, prior to gazing into the face of Jah, Jala, Jah had been neither male nor female. And prior to gazing into the face of Jah, Jala had been neither male nor female. Yeah. Yeah. Behold, the moment Jah beheld Jala, Jala became the divine feminine. And Ja became the divine masculine. Yeah, so it's the same story just told in a different way. Yeah. It's Better the, detail. It's the division yeah. between the two. Because uh, first it was like God and then God split itself into him and her and then divided from there and then created man, which man not as like a man, but just like man being. And then divided feminine and masculine, and then with the eating of the, the fruit from the knowledge of good and evil, just yeah. that knowledge is splitting the mind into left and right brain, like logic and creative against each other. That's what like the two snakes in all the like esoteric and occult stuff means. Yeah. Is, is it, when you have one snake, it means that one side has overthrown the other, but if you have two, that's like bringing that everything was... back together, because yeah. you're trying to come back together instead of dividing, which yeah. is what we're, like, yeah. continually doing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but it's like in all those other books, it's like, there was man, and Eve was made from his rib, right? Mm -hmm. So in, like, all these books, it creates, like, this very masculine power yeah. thing, rather than, like, a balance and harmony. Yeah, exactly. And they leave out that her in is, is the earth. The yeah. earth is her. Everything that grows out of the earth is of her. And everything that runs upon the earth is of him. So it's it's showing the division right there, the difference. But yet you have like this back and forth energy. Yeah. So the earth is like the womb. Hmm. Yeah. Well and you then come to what? What? You said like the earth is her. Yeah, so the, the him uh -huh. would be like the outside forces, so probably like the sun, we mm. consider that. The sun in the sky. I think, mm. yeah, because the moon. The moon. Moon has always been moon referred to as feminine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the, that's why you have like the sun and the moon and everything. Yeah. The moon is the, the reflection of the sun, but it has its own energy. Hmm. But what is masculine and feminine? It's just two different energies because in this reality we are split into dualism and everything's split. Opposing degrees this way and opposing degrees that way. It's the same as like, you know, what is yeah. like hot and what is cold. Mm -hmm. There's just varying degrees of temperature. So we're always split all the way along. In that way, that's why we're always losing our fucking minds because <laughs> half of ourselves is saying one thing and half of ourselves is saying the other thing, especially nowadays with the way that consciousness seems to go with a lot of people is they're not coming together within themselves. They're like, one side's yeah. like trying to kill the other. It's like Cain and Abel, the first, yeah. you know, yeah. destruction yeah. of the good and the victory of the yeah. evil inside. Yeah, it brings us right back to the the facts of, uh, you know, re nature fighting ourselves. Yeah. You know, exactly. Using natural foods and yeah. natural medicines, natural uh, 
ways of thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, working within, like, the principles and laws that nature dictates. Yeah. Like, we don't need to be working against everything. We're not here to conquer nature. We're yeah, we gotta let go. It. Yeah, we gotta let, let go. go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, people forget that they are nature. Like, yeah. you know, like, we're human beings, and there are, like, bears and fish and plants and birds whatever else and we're not any different from those like we're all beings of the earth we all like have the same source we all need to like eat food and breathe air to survive but humans for some reason like seem to have forgotten that and gotten distracted and yeah you know we're not animals we're civil (laughs) we're different from everything else (laughs) no if anything i find that a lot of the old teachings say that like because we are self-aware, it is more our job to take care of everything else. Mm. Doesn't that make more sense? That, that makes sense, because yeah. that's what we can do. We can't destroy, because it just doesn't work. We're mm-hmm. going to destroy everything, and it's going to destroy us, and then it'll continue. It's Which we're stop, doing currently. Right? Mm-hmm. So, it's whether we want to be kind of like shaken off the earth, like a bad disease, because we're causing rashes and stuff, or do we help fight against the disease, you know? I, th- I think, like, the biggest thing that's working in that favor right now is that definitely the plant medicines and stuff. Like, yeah. Like, ayahuasca and peyote. Yeah. Iboga, all you've, that stuff. Like, you've done all, like, the ayahuasca and all that, right? Peyote, yeah. yeah sam- like, I've done, I can't, I can't even list them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can what? you explain that you gain that you feel people... Well, don't like, have going into it or is it like maybe the loss of some shit I think it, what first off the first thing was is about letting go of all these things that we think are real and things we need to be focusing on yeah you know because all these things that that go on in our day to day lives are very distracting from our purpose which is just existing yeah and remembering the, the gentleness of our lives that we have to share upon the world yeah and like share upon the mother and our friends and, and everything and uh, the main thing that I've learned was to remember you know that the essence of life and how grateful I am yeah you know and that's like the I think that's like the the, the deeper so you could say it's like a, like a feeling of like gratitude yeah or just being able to exist in the way that yeah, pretty much, you know, when yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Remembering and also understanding. Yeah. Because, like, plant medicines, like, when you're talking about ayahuasca and peyote and all those kinds of things, like, mm-hmm. you take them and you're going on a visionary journey. Yeah. You're having, like, very intense visual experience, and, like, the visuals are, are lessons. They tell you things mm-hmm. about the nature of existence. Mm-hmm. So, like, in my experience, I've gained understanding of, like, like disease for one like where disease comes from what is it and like how do you how do you clean it out how do you heal it yeah and it's not with like pharmaceuticals like in my experience anyway it's been about like like energies for one yeah. like negative energy can make people sick and yeah, that's absolutely. something that like I didn't know before yeah we were actually talking about that the other day yeah and uh because we were talking about meat, mm. like eating meat, mm-hmm. and the difference between something that is in a factory its whole life, treated like crap, like sick, you know, dying, yeah. like being brutalized, versus something that's just out in the field hanging out, yeah, doing its thing, you know? Exactly. And well, it's still like, they, like I, I eat meat, but I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to say that cow that's having a happy time, <laughs> some freaking farmer goes up to that thing and stabs it with a knife. That's not very a happy moment. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like... Not for the farmer, at not, least. Not for the, the farmer or sell. the cow, yeah. you know? But, like, that's just making, you know, every time I eat meat now, I think about... Someone just stabbing something. Like, <laughs> oh, no, like, yeah. Like, that freaking hurt. I just cut my finger and stabbed my finger. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not well, a happy cow at that point. <laughs> but what I'm saying is the difference between eating and consuming something that has had bad energy yeah. its whole life versus something that has good energy and then hopefully at the end it was done 
respectfully and you know it didn't feel pain and stuff like that but either way yeah. you're taking on it's that energy. negative energy so if you're eating like McDonald's and like shitty meats and like the difference between like the good stuff from the butcher shop from local mm-hmm. places around and versus like uh, you know factory farms where you're taking on all this negative energy all the time yeah. totally all day long and then usually when you're eating that stuff because it's so cheap you're eating a yeah. lot of it so you're yeah, I think if it's legally caught or legally grown, yeah, but illegally, um, illegally butchered, that's the good stuff. <laughs> 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 that's the good stuff. Yeah, it has to be illegal butcher. Yeah, illegal butcher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because none of us here eat pork, and well, I don't know if you eat pork. Well, Bacon now and then, I can't say that I'm doing <laughs> pork. Yeah, I'm not totally I've never really, I've okay. never really yeah. been, like, I never really liked, like, pork yeah. as a meat, though, really. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, bacon's pretty good, but it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's just the salt and the oil, like, that's you might as well take a block of butter and put some salt on it and take <laughs> yeah, a bite. Exactly. Like, that's, I do that, get up with my bacon food, I just eat a It's funny, I think I'd rather butter. other types of pork rather bacon. Really? really? Bacon's, like, on the, probably more... End of my list. Oh, well, like, <laughs> I, like, I've tried, like, when I, when I've taken ayahuasca, I've tried, like, every, everything that you're not supposed to eat, <laughs> and, and then gone to a ceremony. Yeah. And, and, or just drink some ayahuasca after eating it. Just because you had to learn just, for yourself? Just because I had to learn what, it, like, the real, like, because I was told, like, don't, you know, stop eating nightshades, stop eating dairy, stop, you know, like, eating meat. All the, you know, coffee, ganja, all these things, and so I just tried, tried them out because I wanted to see why not. Because yeah. no one was really what telling happens? me why not. Mm. And so everything I was, I was pretty fine with everything. Like the the journey was a bit trickier with everyone, but then <laughs> pork came about. The ham sandwich. <laughs> I haven't eaten pig since then. Like <laughs> yeah. since then. Uh, it was like literally that whole night. Like I was curled up in a ball, couldn't see sweated so bad I smelt like I shat myself <laughs> and I was like just sweating to the point that it's like I pissed myself <laughs> yeah couldn't stop trying to vomit all night and uh and then morning came and I was fine and I didn't smell but it was like I was fighting for my life the whole night like <laughs> my my breath everything my heart rate trying to keep it at balance and why do you think pork has that effect more than I can speak to that because I spent some time in the Amazon with working with um, like healers or shamans down there who work yeah. with ayahuasca and there was like a food incident where like a bunch of people ate uh, things they shouldn't have eaten and they were all like having weird visions and like yeah. freaking out in ceremony <laughs> and stuff and so the shaman like had a meeting and he talked to us about like why we shouldn't eat pork and like why it's not good in ceremony. And he described it as basically um, pigs are highly intelligent creatures. Mm -hmm. And if you look at one, like if you spend any time around pigs, you can tell that they're really smart and they're almost human-like. They feel. Yeah, you can see it in their eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was literally talking about that today. I was talking about that, yeah. And so, like, what do you think... Like, you think those pigs aren't aware that, like, we're raising them to be butchered? Like, yeah. they totally know what's going on. And so yeah. they're living their whole life in fear mm. yeah. of that moment when they get taken away to be killed. And so when you eat it, when you eat a pig, you're eating that fear yeah. that has yeah. been embedded in them. And then you take that on into your own being. Yeah. So that's, a, that's, well, so that's where it comes exactly back to that cow about, thing, yeah. how that cow is living in fear. It's being tortured. It's being pushed around. It's in a... You know, awful living. Yeah, awful living environment. Stressed out. But yeah, I, I can definitely speak to that. I had pot belly pigs, and like we had pigs on the farm and stuff. And they, you look in their eyes, and they look at you, and they look at your eyes. They don't like, you know, a lot of animals will kind of look at your, the structure of your being, just kind of like, uh, like you know, a cow kind of looks at you, looks at your face. But they look you right in the eyes like a human does. And right. like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just a language barrier. It's Yeah, it's weird. But it, it's almost that there is a bit of a language there. That's why you feel that kind of, you know, connection. Yeah. But yeah, pigs not. Uh, it's 
especially pot belly pigs, I found they're even more so. Like they're more like, like you'd, they'd be out in the field and you'd like look over and they'd like look you right in the eyes and you're like, oh, don't want to come out, man. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's crazy. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, meat. It's what a weird, weird concept. Yeah. Seems to be. I think I'm like back on the verge of like going veggie or yeah. vegetarian again. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where I'm at. Like, well, I only think it's weird where it's gone to today with like mass production. Yeah, that's me too. Right that's where like, yeah. weird me too. Kind of like yeah. horror factories and shit. Totally. <laughs> it's sick. What's going on yeah. there? But I think I can stay like totally fine without eating it. Yeah. You know, I, I I have done it for some time, but it's like. I always end up coming back. <laughs> it, used to, it used to be because of bacon. Yeah. But now it's like, no. But like, we've been so blessed. Neighbors giving us, you know, like, deer that they've hunted and, you yeah. know, able to trade for salmon and, yeah. you know, yeah, like, that's, farmers that's down the road and farm chickens and stuff. So it's yeah. like... If you can do that... Then we don't have to buy anything from the grocery store. Yeah, that's no, like, perfect. The other day I was working outside. Yesterday, actually, I was working outside. My neighbor comes by. Here's a bunch of, uh, what were they, um, like, uh, chops, deer chops. Nice. Dropped off, like, four deer chops to us. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I like deer, too. I like it. Gaming. Yeah. Yeah, well, part of it's probably, like, our relationship to meat has been kind of excessive. Like, people It's been eat obsessive. Meat. <laughs> yeah. Every meal, like we don't need, or like at least once a day, like we don't need to eat meat that often. No, you're supposed to eat it when you crave it, and only eat like as much as the palm of your hand. Right? right. Like you don't need, like not crave it, like crave it like people do, like the way they crave it, like drugs, like you know. Yeah. I have a girl, if, you're, if your body is like. <laughs> like <laughs> once in a while, your body might be like, oh. Yeah, your like, body would be like, oh, I really yeah. need this protein, you know, like the iron and yeah. stuff yeah but i mean protein you can get from veggies no problem mm -hmm. i could see it being more being more of something that like people would have eaten in the winter you yeah know, when you couldn't yeah. grow vegetables exactly. yeah. mm -hmm. just to sustain you because you can mm -hmm. you can run for quite a while off meat like, yeah yeah you know, small for sure. amount. yeah and then you get like grain like if you're just eating corn all all in too long you're pretty <laughs> freaking you need the fats. Yeah. You need the Something healthy to fats. Break down that sugar. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <coughs> but other, yeah, it, it seems like it was, you know, it's, it came into about as something out of necessity, but now we just, we've gotten weird about stuff. We got lazy about it. Yeah. And obsessed. Yeah. I don't know, that's the beauty of a man, you know, it's like, <laughs> like we just we just want to create and, and make things easier and easier and easier for ourselves yeah you know and so we're at where we're at now you know it's like in one mind in one mindset you know oil refineries are great <laughs> you know in the other mindset they're like they're not it's yeah. like destruction to the earth but you know, I think that destruction to the earth, yeah, that's right. You know, we should be, like, gardening, making organic yeah. fuels. But then that other mind say, oh, this is great. There's nothing wrong with this. Yeah. You know, this is, this that's is good. Side, well, that's a blind though. That's, so it's, like... That's because, like we were speaking about earlier, the full circle now is dualism. Everything yeah. is. Yeah. There is a degree. And there's always going to be people way the hell at this end, and then people way the hell at this end, like... Mm -hmm. You know, because there's people that care about the earth, there's going to be people trying to destroy it. Yeah, there's always... You know, it's eternally light. the hero's journey. It's like, you know, Star Wars. The, good, <laughs> the, the, the light versus the dark side. Totally. You know, just back and forth, but nobody ever wins. It's just kind of forever like that. Right. So it's the only way that it can keep things tangible and real and physical. Mm -hmm. hmm. Kind of like masculine and feminine balance, too. Yeah. Like, we have to have both. You have to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is a little bit of kitchen sound okay? This is real, man. This is the real deal. We're legit, <laughs> we're legit at Rochelle and Elliot's house. They made us an amazing dinner. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Now we're trying to figure out what to talk about here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, what, what about your clothing line? Let's let's at clothing? least explain it a little bit to well, you. So Rochelle's people gonna come over uh, here and do a little. So people can do a little plug, you know, like. Uh, it was cool. She talked Bring to me chair about over. the process, and it's very structured, monthly and yearly. It's like you've got a yearly structure. You know, <laughs> yeah. Structured plan. Scooch on up to the microphone. <laughs> yeah, the the design process is very it's like yeah, very structured. Mm-hmm. Cuz you got cuz you said month there's certain months where it's kind of on and off season. Well, for me anyways, um cuz I'm designing for spring or in in the winter. Mm-hmm. And then in the spring and summer I'm selling and then in the fall I'm or end of summer I'm designing for fall and winter. Awesome. Um, because the clothes need to be ready for the season. Yeah. Can't design for fall in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, fall yeah. would be over. <laughs> yeah. And what's your what's your vision with your clothing line? What's kind of like your. Well, your yeah, a- like your ancient natural fibers on modern people. Yeah. Con- like contemporary style. Awesome. Yeah, that's We're essentially bringing it. Bringing the roots. Bringing it back to. Bringing the roots stuff. to the fashion. <laughs> well, I mean, I really like. When I was, like, 16, I was really, like, immersed into, like, the festival scene. Mm -hmm. And that's where I first got exposed to, like, ethical and organic fabrics Mm -hmm. and clothing. And it was awesome, but, like, festival clothing doesn't work for everyone. So I was like, hey, um, the only way to move forward in fashion is to go natural. Um, And to do that, the clothing needs to be modern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of trying to blend. Yeah. Like your own take on, on this. Yeah, there's still a yeah, there's still a natural kind of energy to it. Anytime people walk into our shop or our, uh, like a makeshift boutique or whatever, they say it's so organic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially <laughs> but, that time of the atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was like, It's so organic but it's not hippie. Like hemp <laughs> is no longer boxy and hippie. It can yeah. be comfortable and you know, like you can make a blazer out of hemp and it looks professional and nice yeah no I definitely I know for a fact because like just the the clothing that Elliot's made me is probably the best clothes I'm wearing a sweater right now yeah I noticed yeah right (laughs) and it just looks like a regular black hoodie it actually fits you know and with all the different fabrics that you guys use they seem to just be a lot more comfortable they breathe, you know? And yeah. Like they're strong. They feel strong. It doesn't feel like it's just going to fall apart if yeah. I, like, you know, wear it every day. So yeah. I want to make a stylish pants. Some stylish pants that are, like, fully flexible. Yeah. You know, but still... So you do, like, still, a full sidekick with it or Yeah, something? but still, like, <laughs> you can sit cross-legged. Yeah. You can lie down, lounge on the couch and and your belt's not riding yeah, yeah. in weird spots. and. You know, and, and uh, I can you definitely could do, be your guinea pig for that. Could do yoga. <laughs> yeah. I think I figured them out. I need like a pair of jeans that I can do like lotus position, lotus position <laughs> with, because these yeah. ones they're not so good, you know. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's yeah. it. Like a little bit of stretch. So would you want it to look kind of dress pants kind of look, or what kind of look would you be looking for? Oh, like yeah, a bit dress pant yeah. with like uh, a hit bit of slack. rugged yeah. and like some earth yeah. warrior vibe. That's mm-hmm. sweet. Yeah. Functional dress pants. Yeah. yeah. Comfortable. Kind of like these. Quality, yeah. too. Because yeah. the problem is with dress pants is the fabric's so thin and, like, pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> you, can't just you can wear only it. wear them yeah. for exactly. certain things. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are starting to realize the value, too, of, like, going to a tailor. If something, yeah. like, if you love it, but the pants are too long, go get them hemmed. Don't. Exactly. Buy them and not wear them. Mm. And spend a bit more money on something that's quality because you'll have it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, well, it's how they used to do things, right? You'd, yeah. You would ha- you'd take something and have it fixed. You wouldn't just throw it away. Yeah. It. it was good. You knew it was good. You knew that you'd wear it. So you had it tailored so that it yeah. was your clothes. Exactly. This is why we all got to open our minds. We need cobblers. Yeah, that's what we need. We, we really, I, I sure. need a cobbler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. a cobbler? A, I'm thinking sure like someone makes shoes. Isn't that a cobbler? Yeah, it's delicious dessert. Peach cobbler? <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Like we sold yeah, shoes. Watch, we need more peach cobblers. Adam Sandler's yeah. 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 is a cobbler? Yeah. Oh, you guys okay. gotta watch it. Freaking, I was like, I could. I love the music. 
the Jewishness of it, it just yeah. like, <laughs> it brought me back to like hanging out at this, uh, what was it called, Tovli in Toronto. Yeah. Just to make the best falafels. <laughs> nice. Oh, man. Whole kosher. <laughs> so good. Yeah. What kind of cobbler were you guys talking about? A shoe or cobbler. A shoe cobbler. It's a shoe cobbler. Somebody who fixes and Peach repairs cobbler. shoes. <laughs> oh. That's what they yeah. call them. Oh, cobbler. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Not someone who makes cobbler pies. Because <laughs> that, that's what you call a pastry chef. <laughs> 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 They don't make cobblers there. Could though. you imagine somebody <laughs> who makes peach cobbler in one shop and next to it is the shoe like cobbler? Fixing shoe How confused would Larissa be all the time? <laughs> what, about, what about one store yeah. called the cobbler? Cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cobbler. Get all your cobblers in one place. Like a peach <laughs> Get your shoe fixed. Your shoes fixed. Yeah. <laughs> that would smell weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like old leather and old sweet yeah. pastries. <laughs> <laughs> I would go there. Hell yeah. I'd be all about it. It'd be even better if they had pickled and cheese sandwiches. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Just to make this even more random. Pickle and cheese sandwiches. We're taking people on an astral journey at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then you sit in like Japanese booths. Like, yeah, <laughs> just to make it's things like, very awkward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just make it weird. Yeah. Or even better, when you walk and you step down. Yeah. So the counters are like at your nose. <laughs> <laughs> so you feel. So tiny. you're like a five-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> so they'll be at my normal height then. That way, when yeah. people walk in, they'll, they'll, they'll like enter into their inner child to realize, you know, to let themselves out and to and to really. Start expressing themselves. Yeah, that's you know, art, man. It's like open, open the mind. That's like expand. Yeah, we need to make like a a thing that you that you like walk into an art gallery, turn the corner, and you like walk up to this giant desk. It's like that, and there's like a little plaque that you have to like read, and it tells you that. Yeah. You know, like, get in touch with your inner child. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get in touch and. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's something like I've noticed, growing up with drawing and being creative and like kind of imagining things I feel like because like we think that we gain something when we leave childhood and become adults but I feel like it's almost like we lose something like the, the creativity is just not the wonder the, as intense as it once was like I mm. I still can create, like, I can see anything I want in front of me at any time, but when I was a kid, I could feel it more, like, it was there, you were there, right? I, I, yeah. I think what, what removes that feeling, you know, is that, like, when we're born, <coughs> our pineal gland, our third eye, is, like, wide open, right? Yeah. And by the age of seven, it's, it's really starting to close up. Yeah, so but, that's where that... So th there's that, but it's also like as you get older and older, you start seeing things in the world that are going on that are based with love. Yeah. And and it, you, you can't understand it. Yeah. You know, and so it starts shutting certain things off because it starts making you feel certain ways, sad, feel sadness, and things that make you hurt inside. You know that you yeah. can't really quite understand. You know. It almost like leaves like a. It's almost like it leaves like a riff in your vibration. Yeah. Like well, I think a lot of it is conditioning. Yeah. Because, like, all of us went to school and, like, probably had to do things in school that we didn't really want to do or maybe we found excruciatingly boring or, like, whatever. Like, there's a lot of conditioning that happens when we're growing up that takes us away from our true essence. And then we get to a point where we don't even know how to connect back into that anymore. Yeah. And, like... Yeah, so if you hang out as an adult with, like, a little kid, you're like, the kid's just doing whatever the hell they want. It's having a great time. You know? Like, <laughs> it doesn't care what you tell it. Like, yeah. doesn't care what people think. Yeah. If anything, it'll offer you solutions. <coughs> totally. Or set an example somehow. Exactly. It'll teach you something about yourself. Yeah, yeah, we have lots to learn from children. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that, that's the thing, you know, it's like, you know, opening that up, it's like, when I was 18, I had to, like, somehow I ended up the first time I went to the Native American church was just like blew my mind, you know, like yeah, 
everything I thought I knew because I thought I knew so much and my ego was where it was at even though I was a shy young kid fresh out of high school yeah. you know and then well, you're taught to well, know it all. all of a sudden it was like and I went to Waldorf school too so yeah. I was taught that <laughs> I don't know anything but I know enough you know? Yeah. <laughs> but still I go and I eat this medicine and then all of a sudden it's like everything it just showed me that nothing that I believed mattered yeah once again, the only thing was the, the love, you know, and it showed me that love and that thing, and then I was confused because I didn't know where it went. Yeah. Because of all the conditioning and everything that yeah. I, uh, I went through, you know, hit me in that way, and, and then it came to that space, and I was lost. You know, I was really lost. But yeah. it told me one main thing at that point. It was like, you gotta, you gotta say thank you. To your mother and your father, and and and, be, and and tell them that you're thankful yeah. for the life they've given you, because that's the only thing that really mattered at that point. Yeah, you know. And then from there, it was like I had to rebuild myself and, and go and see the world and see, train myself in the ways that I wanted to see things, in the way that you know nature wanted me to see things. Mm -hmm. And like the ayahuasca, after that was like the rebuild. It was the reset. It was it was a let go of everything and just dive into the earth yeah. and be with the earth and be with nature. Take care of her, be with her and and take you know, give back to her and that's the only thing that really matters. Yeah. You know, it's like and then she'll give to us. Yeah. You know, it's like So Iboga? Iboga. Iboga? Yeah. That's like a type of rehabilitation, right? Or at least now it's being used as rehabilitation? Um, it's used for lots of things, but it kind of like has been known as a really successful treatment for addiction, like yeah. drug addiction. Yeah. And part of the reason that is is because when you take the medicine, it just like, it goes into your body and it pulls stuff out, like it Toxic. draws toxins out mm -hmm. and like usually you would throw them up during ceremony um and so and it can do that with like really heavy stuff substances like mm -hmm. heroin so or yeah. yeah have you done it before yeah i actually okay. just finished working at an iboga center in, okay. in vancouver mm -hmm. um i, I was soul. there iboga soul mm -hmm. yeah it's a really amazing place mm -hmm. um and they're treating people who have really severe drug addictions um people who are addicted to heroin uh, alcohol is alcohol is a hard one actually surprising because like so many people in our culture drink alcohol on a regular basis it's actually one of the harder ones it's to the detox most people <clears throat> yeah the is that why it. it's the hardest to kick it just like really it gets like Maybe really into your body it's, it's like super available. stuck in there huh. so it takes a while yeah. to like really pull it out because the alcohol is like uh trippy one because like most people will drink like three beers at night time yeah you know and they don't consider themselves an alcoholic yeah every night though every night yeah yeah, yeah for how many alcoholic. years that's an alcoholic the yeah. amount the matter if you're drinking every night every day like yeah you're an alcoholic yeah you know like but that's normal in our world you exactly know? i think that's where most because even when you get down to like breaking down what alcohol is, and it tells you what it is. It's it's called spirits for a reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not taking on. Yeah. Good spirits. Yeah, because ba basically, like 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 the, um, you know, like my buddy said to me there. He said, uh, "Oh no, I've lost what I was about to say." <laughs> um, it's probably the alcohol I had last night. Oh yeah. There we go. <laughs> no, see? Um, my buddy said it's like you know like. Oh man, I can't even remember this right now. Oh, brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, okay, the alcohol. Okay, this is, I remembered. We need the alcohol to basically supplement something that we're missing because we've forgotten about it. Yeah. And that thing we've forgotten about is how to communicate with one and each other on this plane. Yeah. And by removing this thing called our egos and our self and our disworth and our lack of worth for ourselves, and our, um, I guess, our emotional things that hold us back from communicating with people. When you can just drink something to get rid of that and forget about all that stuff, all of a sudden, there we are. We're yeah. able to communicate, laugh, and be stupid, yeah. have fun. Whereas, 
you know, without that, you can do the same thing, but you're still not on that same plane as that. Those yeah. Alcoholics. Well, with like with drug addiction and with alcoholism and all that stuff, like what I learned at Ibogasol was that um, it's just people's coping mechanisms for dealing with like trauma and things that are like really deep rooted inside them, yeah. like painful things that happened in their childhood or like whatever happened to them. Usually, the addiction is a result of of that thing. Yeah. You know, so it's like you've got really troubling emotions and feelings and you don't know how to deal with them and process them and so you start drinking or you start like doing drugs or whatever yeah. you do. Well what uh, what it's kind of considered in Falun Gong is um, you have your main consciousness then you have a secondary consciousness which is this thing that when you drink and you, you know, and you go out and party and do drugs and stuff, like, like, not medicine, but drugs, like, you know, the synthesized things that destroy you, basically, you're in, ingesting, like, spirits, like, bad things, you're allowing bad things to come inside of you, you are building up your secondary consciousness, which isn't, like, you, the thing in the behind you know, that you can, like, judge your thoughts with, you know, the thing that, that... I guess not judgmentally bear witness to your thoughts and then through that your experiences is um, the more you build that the more you go out and drink and you say oh I'm just going to let go I'm just going to let it all go tonight and like, what are you letting go and what are you letting take control of you because something has to be in control of you because you're still moving you're still doing right. things and if it's not you what is it and yeah. the more you do that the more you build that thing inside of you and then right. the real part of you shrinks and becomes small and then it's yeah it's crazy actually like I have a friend who's been struggling with like alcohol addiction for quite a while but I like he was mostly sober like when I hung out with him yeah. and then one day he came over to my house and he was like he'd been drinking but I didn't know and I was like what is up with my friend? Like, yeah. Who is this person? And yeah. it was like another being had stepped into his body. Yeah. And I was my friend was gone, totally gone, like totally different person. It's totally like it's it's like exactly what you were just describing. Yeah. And like they believe it's it's kind of like that part of specific spiritual practice that scares people and makes them run away is saying that we are made up of a bunch of different beings, which makes sense in a as above so below microcosmic macrocosmic viewpoint on the world mm. because if we are small a small piece taking part in the larger piece which is like maybe a god that's bigger than us or god or the all whatever you want to call it the thing that we're taking part in and then there's things taking part in us mm. which you know so on and so forth then it would make sense that we have multiple you know, there's your main consciousness, there's a secondary one, and then there's all these other things that are attached to you, and then get attached to you as you go through life. Yeah. And, you know, just by how, what you say to people, how you act, like, things can like, latch onto you, and then, you know, it's just that one little thing driving you this way a little bit more each time. You know? Yeah. you go to make the decision, maybe it's harder for you to make the good decision, because the bad things are built up inside of you. It's mm -hmm. like that you know, Cain killing Abel inside your head. The stronger Cain gets, the easier he can kill Abel, which is like the both sides of the consciousness, right? Yeah. Pretty crazy. Can something. you, like, tell me more about Falun Gong? Because that's something I've only just, like, learned about a little bit. It's something I'm definitely still, like, a novice into. I can't, definitely can't say I'm, like, pro or anything like that, but I've been practicing it for four years or something like that and then reading the book it's, I have to read it multiple times because I'm like it's hard to read the direct translation from Chinese to English and like fully understand it you know so it takes a few tries but <clears throat> basically you are it's like a qigong exercise but you are building up um different name for it but anyways the idea is it's the simplest way to practice at the most advanced level 
of building that energy. Yeah. And you're building your gong, which is above your head. It's that thing that, like, kind of vampiric people, like, you know, people you feel exhausted from being around and from across the room, they're just kind of, like, drawing from you. That's what they're drawing down. That's, like, when you're, when you're like, low on, like, kind of soul energy, that's what it is. It's this they're energy depleting they're talking about here. It would be, like, as if, if this is a Taurus field, like a magnetic field, that's, like, the, um... I forget what it's called. Anyways, I'll have to look that up later and put it in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the idea is is that when you do these certain exercises, you're building that energy, and then you're also building your spiritual energy. And they're fairly simple movements, which, as you do it, you can get good at them very easily, which allows you to not take a whole lifetime to build that energy up. Because like, the idea is, like with... in within Falun Gong what they say is that um, like normal Qigong practices or like yoga and stuff is more of like uh, they say definitely yoga is like the side entrance into the same place but you take like a whole lifetime getting good at it good enough at it to get there right. right same with like Tai Chi and stuff to be a Tai Chi master you have to spend your whole life and then you only get this much of the way. So Falun Gong's just like a faster, more direct route to like the same end. Essentially, essentially is what they explain. Like there's so much more to it, and uh, <clears throat> basically the other part of Falun Gong, which kind of shows its shows how strong it is, like in China, is it's illegal. And what they do is is because part of the practice of Falun Gong, like the the, uh, the doctrine is uh, truth, compassion, and forbearance. Mm -hmm. So then when somebody comes and asks you, hey, like, what are you doing? You have to teach them for free. You can't charge money for it. It's not like you can't hold a Falun Gong class and charge people money to come to your Falun Gong retreat mm -hmm. or anything like that. You just have to teach freely because the idea is, is it's freedom of information. And in China, there's like thousands and thousands and thousands of people doing it in the squares and stuff because they realized how much it's helping with their health and like how good they feel and how much energy and <clears throat> all that. Considering that it is very like some portions of communist China are very unhealthy and poor and stuff. So they were doing this and uh, basically the government didn't like because it's a communist government they want to get paid for everything that happens they wanted to charge because there's so many people doing this they wanted like kind of like taxes for it they mm. wanted to get paid and the doctrine is no you can't so they made it illegal and uh, what they do is they'll pay a person five grand to tell you who's practicing Falun Gong and then what so they like a snitch yeah, so like a friend, a family member or something. And because it's such a poor country, like it's five grand, that's a lot of friggin' money, you know? Mm -hmm. So what happens is the reason that the organ donor um, industry is so huge in China, why you can call over there and be like, you know, I want, I need like a liver transplant, and you'll get it next week. Mm -hmm. Which means that they always have somebody available to transplant these organs out of. So what happens is with all of these, you can actually call, I've seen things on YouTube where people have called and asked the clinics and stuff like that, and you can specifically um, ask for if the person practiced Falun Gong. And what they'll do is they'll take somebody out of one of the work camps who is a Falun Gong practitioner, and they cut that part out and give it to this person with them still alive. So that's like the whole controversy behind the practice so don't practice it in China <laughs> <laughs> it's a super simple meditation and then uh, five different movements and it's it's uh, it's quite amazing from what I've experienced with it like, what have you experienced like from practicing it with um, like in your own health and stuff when I was practicing it like hardcore every day which I'm not now, can't lie about that, right? <laughs> but um, when I was practicing it every day, it made a huge difference. Like, you don't feel that, uh, 
that kind of weight, you know, in your head, pushing down, you know, as you're stressed out thinking about things, you lose all that, you feel very, you feel like you're full of light. That's mm -hmm. the only way I can explain it. Like inside, there's like a light that's now like, wow, like burning like crazy. So much energy, you know, I feel amazing. Things that happen don't phase you at all. Like you don't judge things as negative or positive. You just judge them as experience. It, it becomes a lot easier to just go through your daily life mm. while doing it. It gives you kind of peace all the way around. And uh, what I notice too, because like I kind of see colors and stuff all the time off of people, but I noticed when practicing that, like we'd be on the beach and I'd have my eyes closed and I would see like a hand in front of me, but not like, you know, the way that you see the shadow of your body between the sun on a sunny day. It's more like my hand was like, my arms were like red and glowing and like bright. And you With your eyes open? With my eyes closed. And I could see, you know, everybody around me and the animals coming close. It's quite a, it's definitely just one piece of the puzzle. So you think it activates your third eye then? It sounds like it activates your entire energy. It, yeah, like it's, the best it aligns, it. you're aligning all of your energy. And um, after we're done, I can show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. Sure, In yeah. Like five minutes, you can everything to do. <laughs> I have a friend who's like, Falun Gong is the way, and he keeps yeah. like sending me the website, and I'm just it's like, cool. okay. There's, it's, oh, cool. it's pretty cool. Like, I definitely, d like, nothing is the way, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, you can't subscribe to Falun Gong and be like, oh, I'm a Falun Gong practitioner, and then, like, that's what I do. Oh, sweet, thanks, man. Or, well, like, you know, I'm this, I'm that, is you need to, you need to use the thing inside of you that says this... Nothing is, you know, this works, this doesn't, this is proper, this is right, I believe this, but I don't follow that, like, Thanks. I like to find out everybody's way, and then try to learn from that, oh, the yeah. actual way that works, you know, the, the proper way, because there's definitely, like, some, some crazy shit, you know, when you start reading all of the, uh, the, um, on the website you can go and read and they're always updating and putting like poetry and different stuff it's quite quite interesting on the Falun Gong website yeah there's so much information on there it's crazy mm -hmm. a lot of it actually is kind of reminiscent of like old kind of like hermetic <laughs> and alchemical <laughs> teachings <laughs> similar so, so I love that because like I, I love reading up so about hermeticism and, and all the different mm -hmm. things that happened at that time mm -hmm. Oh man, <laughs> I think it's really cool, like, well, I don't know, like, my experience has mostly been awakening through plant medicine, yeah. which is, like, a very powerful experience, but then there's this thing that's missing from it, which is, like, how to sustain what you got out of your plant medicine experience yeah. after the fact, and so what happens is you get these people who, like, come back to ceremony over and over and over and over yeah. and over again to, like, like keep raising their vibration or keep maintaining yeah. it but then there's things like meditation and especially things like Falun Gong that that's more like a regular practice yeah, that you could do absolutely that's to something like that we were talking about something the other day in the coffee shop too what were we talking about in the coffee shop well we were just talking about like um how you can have similar experience like obviously oh yeah uh, medicine experience is influenced by the plant and the energy of yeah the plant. But you can still have, like, psychoactive experiences without. Yeah, exactly. I can show yeah. you guys, we can all trip out, trip balls here <laughs> after, in, in, like, within 10 minutes of just breathing air. Sounds yeah. good. Because like, something I've been, I've been actually doing recently is this, this guy named Wim Hof. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's, they call him the Iceman. He, uh, he has this technique and practice of breathing and meditation that he's he's taking in more oxygen into his body and, and like hyper oxygenating his blood so you feel it like tingling through your body you can feel your third eye opening just like, oxygen just oxygen uh -huh. yeah just oxygen and you're doing this breathing technique then you hold your breath 
And then what else, the other things he does is like he goes and swims in like frozen lakes or sits in ice and you do this breathing technique to basically start to control your cardiovascular system and you're drawing, you're almost drawing energy from the cold rather than it being something that's like, like hurting you, like a bad thing, you know. So it's, it's quite, quite interesting. I'll have to show you guys the breathing technique after. It's cool. Like, yeah. It's simple. It's so simple. Like you, you don't even. And like you can feel the effects and something right happening away. like the first time you do it. Because what, what you do is you technique? you breathe in like, and then only release halfway up. And then breathe in, and release halfway up. And then oh, do that okay. thirty to forty times. So you're bringing you lots of oxygen breath. in. Yeah, you're bringing more oxygen in than you're letting out. So it's it all stays like apparently at the edges of your lungs well, and builds up. And I used to up. do that when I was a kid when we were at sleepover camp when I was a kid. Yeah. To <laughs> <laughs> a point, one of us would black out. Yeah. Really? We would hold it. One of us would be up against the wall and then would be like this, with our arms around them, yeah. with their arms over top of your arms, and then take turns just breathing in really fast and get it held and then hold it and then you just pass out. Mm. <laughs> what? This, this way, like, I don't know if you can actually pass out doing it this way because you're only, like, you're taking in oxygen but you're not, like, hyperventilating and you're yeah. not releasing a bunch and you can, you notice a difference right away because, like, normally, you know, I can hold my breath for a minute and a half or a minute. And instantly you'll notice like you can hold it for twice as long. Yeah, it's crazy. But not not for any like not because you're trying to hold it, but you could you sit there in you peace. Like comfortably your body, sit there. Your body huh. doesn't like fight for a breath, you know, and basically what you do is that's part of like training that stuff. And I noticed that we would we went to the hot tubs down here at uh Scoop and Drop. Yeah. And um which are pretty sick here and uh, I'd sit in the in the hot tub do the breathing and then walk over to the the cold tub and like submerse and and hold my breath and then breathe some more and just sit there for as long as I could until I felt uncomfortable and got out and then sat in the hot tub breathed again and held my breath and the more I did that like what was what was happening visually was like everything was going quiet and then all the the colors fluctuate and change and you start to see things that are there but they're not there you know it's similar to like uh, like seeing the, all the auras and the yeah picture. everything you can see the vibrations and stuff and, and because everything's quiet you start to I'm sure as you do it because I'm really new to it like I don't I haven't feel like I've broken the seal you know like you're at that point mm. but then somebody walks up and it's like, ah, what's going on? Let's get in the hot tub. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't be sitting here like, me, like, you know, like staring off into space. But it's, uh, it's like the most intense mushrooms I've ever experienced just from breathing. Right. And after you have a lasting, that lasting kind of like light feeling. It's just effect. easier to snap yeah. out of it. Yeah. You can snap out of it at will, yeah. yeah. But but that's, it's harder to snap in and easier to snap out. But I don't know if that's just because I was only just on the verge, you know. Right. Like I, I can't say because I haven't gone that far into right. it. I haven't done it enough to know what it's like when you're actually are doing it. In. But it's very interesting, and you can. What's cool about this guy's technique is it's like all he's been, had scientists hooked up electrodes to him and shit and like um, he went into the he's sitting in the ice doing his breathing and I think he's in there for like a half an hour or something and um, they took his blood when he was in there and they put an endotoxin in it which is supposed to just make you sick right away or it would show like in the cells it would make them sick and it just killed it right away and then they did the same thing with um they had a bunch of people come and do this uh, this test, like a bunch of them sit in the cold that didn't do his breathing technique and learn kind of his practice. And then they gave them the endotoxin, they all got sick right away. Mm -hmm. And the ones who he did, 
because the, the scientists were like, oh, well, you're just a freak of nature, like, you know, we're just going to trump it up as you're just crazy and nobody else can do this. But he's like, no, I'll teach, I'll teach somebody, you know, within a couple of days, I'll teach a bunch of people how to do this. And he did, and I, I went through, I definitely suggest checking out Wim Hof. It's pretty crazy. Wim Hof? Wim Hof, yeah. It's like, a, I think he's from Sweden or something. Mm -hmm. He lives in Sweden or something mm -hmm. like that. Huh. Crazy Pretty man. Crazy. And he's a very real guy. Like when you watch yeah, documentaries all, and stuff, he's, he's like, fuck yeah, give me a beer. Like yeah, he's not he's like, like <laughs> you know, total weirdo yeah. and like, you know, off in space. Not he, some hi out there hippie guy. No, yeah. he's no. a totally regular guy. You know, you just can, just on this on the path to, you know, understand yeah. ourselves and our bodies. And I think now what I'm trying to do is I'm using that and Falun Gong to just really connect and go inside, mm -hmm. right? And I find that stuff very important with, you know, tattooing and drawing and having to, like, create things every day. Mm -hmm. um, to just keep and sustain the channel, being open all the time? Yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, just allow... The more input you give of yourself into creativity, the less creativity you receive. It's like the more I try, the harder it is, the less, yeah. the more I just let go of it and let it flow out. Mm -hmm. That's the what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the same with anything, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. It's easier yeah. that way. Yeah. But if you let go, then it's going to be, it's yeah. going to flow. But when you let go, your, your channel is open and you're connected with spirit. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know have a little piece of dust in your eye. The more you try and look at it, the more it runs away. <laughs> and then when you stop, well, it's just exactly right there. <laughs> you know? Well, as that happened to me the other day, I had a wood chip, had a wood chip oh, lodged in there. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was like, in there with freaking Q-tips and stuff, trying to get it. Fuck. That's the worst. You have to blink. Yeah, I didn't know it hurt when I blinked, so I had to hold my eyelid up. Oh, and yeah, wood chip, Like a yeah. Q-tip. It's like a flush. Was it stuck in, in your eye? or was it No, just I've had that though before, oh, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. used a Q-tip for that. I had a piece of metal stuck in oh, my okay. eye one time, so <laughs> deep I had to go into the doctor. And get them to And he had to off. get, like, to, he had to, like, pick it out and yeah. like, oh. keep pulling at it, and that was the craziest. In the future, you just have someone lick your eyeball. Sometimes that helps. <laughs> No, it was. It, it I was could see the metal. It was stuck. Yeah, it was stuck, it was in stuck right in. Like, yeah, Tom. Did right I hear that front. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that right. Have you, ever, right? Have, have you ever had it, you guys? Try it out. Look <laughs> at <laughs> each other's eyeballs. Man. You can actually do it. Doesn't uh -huh. hurt. Oh, I learned that one. I'll good. know who to call oh. next time if something <laughs> blows yeah. my eye. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> you brush your teeth and then lick my eye. <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. It's a mint. Like a glass of water. Oh, man. Salt water. Yeah. Rinse your mouth out with salt water. Yeah. And then with fresh water so you yeah. don't get salt because that would suck too. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> Sal saline solution, man. It's salt. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> saline solution. Yeah. So salt water. Elliot's the new eye doctor. Yeah. Oh, you got you got uh, a cornea natural. infection. Come All here. All natural. <laughs> yeah, gross. Just lift up the eyelid. <laughs> Salty. Not limited to You'll just have eyes. Like, um, a rubber tongue attached to a stick. Yeah. You have to wear like tongue, a makeshift tongue, tongue condoms, yeah. like uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, gloves, so yeah. sanitary. <laughs> 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 I can see it now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> eyeballs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like an eyeball zombie doctor. Sweet. Yeah. Well, can we do like a quick, because that was fucking awesome. Um, can we just have everybody like say who they are? Howdy ho! Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm happy the Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Like, just our names, or what? Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> all about to poop jokes, aren't you? <laughs> totally. <laughs> well, I'm surprised. Tonight, we didn't we didn't talk about poo. We <laughs> now we are, dude. It's that's, yeah. that's, normally what, that's normally what I talk about <laughs> anytime. Yeah, you finally have found somebody who can't handle it. There. Erica. Erica. I can handle it. No, you can't. Look at her. She's cringing. She's cringing. Foul movement. 
All if right. She's, if she's, <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've actually never, I don't know if I've ever met somebody who's like been so like frigid around girls <laughs> talk while eating. Oh, I'm mostly just doing it to be funny. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it doesn't bother me that much. She's all about the hot girls. Uh, I'm pretty good at talking about and like seeing gross things. Don't talk to me about hot like, curls. With Zeta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Zeta. I felt really sick after looking at Zeta's tooth that night. But I think, oh, I, think I just smoked she, a bit too much weed and then I ate a she, bunch of crackers. She, like, <laughs> she, What's the she, uh, she got into a fight with this other dog. And the oh dog, like, dog. bit her nose, but, like, bit behind her tooth, so it, <laughs> it pulled her tooth out, but it didn't, like, pull out. It, like, was sticking straight out, like, just, <laughs> like a snaggle tooth, just straight oh. out. And I was able to, like, pop it back out and then in, so that it's, it's in. It's <laughs> in. She's on antibiotics. It's not infected. We're great. She's but there's so much of the gum stuck to it. Like, it was Aww. more just that, like, oh. it, like, inside, like, popped something out, and it just, like went out and like folded and was like she's oh. like oh, for like the whole night she just got like this weird like oh. thing going on oh, no. <laughs> yeah. the for next really. day when I looked at it I was fine like it, it I can yeah but I think I just smoked too much weed and <laughs> I felt so sick
That, was really that cool. really hurts. <laughs> Maybe we should try it one more time. That sounded good. I just got it. My finger is like. I've been practicing a little bit just since I've been here. Mm, that sounds really good. There's a capo that I can cheat with. <laughs> <laughs>